Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a garden video. Today we're going to do a full tour of my vegetable and flower garden. Things are finally coming to harvest, which is really exciting. I do live in zone 6B, I think. So typically the harvest is a little bit bigger in like more towards August, but things are really starting to fill out. So I thought that right now would be a great time to show you. This is the garden, as you can see, it is a wood structure. I had to build up a pretty substantial fence because we live in a wooded area. As you can see, there's lots of really beautiful trees. Behind me, um, we get a lot of wildlife, which has been an interesting adventure every single year. I have a bunch of um, daylilies planted up at the front and there's four of them. And I was originally just wanting to have this be mirrored on the other side, but then after planting the daylilies, I realized that like, I don't really like them that much because they just blend in with the grass. And as you can see, we have this runner grass, which just loves to take over this garden bed. I get this all over this garden bed. It's so annoying. It's really, I don't know if it's invasive, but it feels really invasive. Um, so I struggle with that a lot in these front garden beds. Um, I have some cone flowers back here, and this is the original one that I planted. And as you can see, it got some deer pressure this year. <laughs> the deer actually just like bit the plant clean off. And yeah, it is flowering. It did kind of rebuild after that. It also seeded itself over here. So this one was just like a volunteer, I guess you would call it, um, which was really cool. I didn't have to plant it and it was actually really nicely spaced from the other one. Coming over to this side, this side is slightly more realized, but not really. I don't even remember what this plant is, but I got it on sale at um, Lowe's earlier in the season. So I figured I would just plant it. But as you can see, I have this big arbor here and I just finished building this part a couple weeks ago. I made a garden vlog if you want to check out my garden vlog series. Um, I just showed the process of finishing this. I still would like to put some more wood like across the top because I do plan on planting some climbing roses. I think I'm going to do it towards the end of this season because it's a little hot now to plant right now and this side gets really heavy western exposure. It gets very very high light so i've had to be a little bit careful about what plants i put here just because yeah they do tend to get a lot of direct sun the direct sun is really great for plants like this this is a salvia and it's a perennial salvia i really love purple flowers i feel like in the future i'm going to definitely plant more purple but you can see there's lots of grass and stuff growing up in it it needs a lot of maintenance and i just pulled all the weeds in this like a couple weeks ago and you can already see that it's already taking back over. And I did put weed barrier down, it's just insane. But over here, this is a butterfly bush, which I got on sale at Lowe's. It was super, super cheap. I think I still have the tag in here. Yeah, it's a Budlia little coconut butterfly bush. So it has white flowers. Budlia oftentimes will have like a light purple flower or like a deep purple flower. This one's white and I really like that paired next to the salvia they are planted pretty close to each other and i don't know i kind of want to move the budlia over a little bit to be closer to this plant over here which is an allium and i would literally love to plant more of this because it's just so easy it's a part of the onion family i believe when i cut one of the leaves it smelled like onions it's a nice tidy plant and it comes back every year i love it okay we enter into the garden now to you know, welcome us. We have a Talvera butterfly, which is kind of like my homage to my home, Tucson, Arizona. And then we have a sign that my grandma actually made for me. It says, welcome to Becca's garden. And into the garden I go to lose my mind and find my soul established 2021. Really special. I love this so much. I think it's so cute um, right at the front of the door. When you come in, you're gonna notice there's a lot of weeds. I spent hours of my life a couple weeks ago pulling weeds and they all just came back. Like all of them are, all the areas are almost completely filled in again. It's just, it's just what it is. <laughs> I live in Missouri. It rains a lot. It's very humid. It's a great environment to grow plants, but that means that all plants grow here, even the weeds. So come on in cameraman. 
I'm gonna shut the gate. Off to this side, we'll start on this bed. I have a bunch of volunteer zinnias and I don't have the heart to um, cut them down. I just, every time I see volunteers, I'm so excited because plants are just fun. And especially when you didn't know they were gonna pop up, they're even more fun. And zinnias are really pretty. I've been able to cut a lot of these and bring them inside for cut flowers and stuff like that. I actually intentionally planted them in this section right here. <laughs> and I just spread a ton of seeds. So my assumption is that a bunch of birds got in here and moved them around and also from previous years. I've also planted them last year. But these are the giant zinnias and it was just in a variety pack and most of them turned out to be this like electric purpley pink color. This vine that you see here is volunteer cantaloupe and I actually thought that I planted cantaloupe over on that side of the garden and it turns out that it was more cucumber and I don't know how that happened but I'm really glad that these came up as volunteers because cantaloupe is one of my favorite things to grow in the garden and I've grown it here every single year basically off of the first time I seeded it. Um, I I guess I just leave some of the melons in here like if they fall off and I just forget that they're there so they end up reseeding themselves a lot. It's just now getting to the point of flowering. Harvest hopefully will be in like the next month or two but they definitely are very very tasty. I love homegrown cantaloupe. Next to that this is my green beans which are currently being attacked by beetles. You can see I've got some really unfortunate looking leaves. I'll pull this one out. If you have something like this that is beetle damage and I have seen the dang things on my plant and when it comes to pest management in my garden honestly I don't do anything and if a plant gets taken over by a pest it's just kind of it is what it is. That's not the best thing to do. There definitely are things you can do. Sprays and home remedies for keeping bugs off of your plants and minimizing damage. I also am having a lot of issues with aphids this year. Mostly there's a lot of aphids over there on some volunteer milkweed. I'll show you that. I've got some more volunteer plants here. I always get a volunteer sunflower right here which is like the most inconvenient place because I can't use <laughs> my work table but I don't have the heart to cut it down because it's going to be such a big beautiful sunflower. But anyway this is the milkweed that I get. So if you come in closer you can see that these flowers are kind of structured similarly to Hoya flowers. Um, but this is a native and it just kind of vines up things. You can see that it's vining up here but there's like a ton of aphids on it. Like a ton. <laughs> it is just absolutely covered. If you can see yeah, there you can see them pretty well. They're just kind of dancing around on the plant, <laughs> eating. There is a such thing as a catch crop, which basically is a plant that you can plant that will get all the bugs attracted to it. I see people do that a lot with like brassica, for example. Anyway, this kind of just happened for me. They are really attracted to this for some reason. I have never seen that in previous years. Um, but anyway, over here I have three zucchini plants and I planted the golden zucchini. Only one of them is really taking off but I plant them over here because zucchini gets so big and I just want them to be far away from everything else. But it has three coming and then three more on the way. So you really only need one zucchini plant per family but I usually plant a few extra just in case. And in this case I'm glad I did because only one of three made the cut. Um, this is my compost pile. I honestly don't do a ton with compost. Like I am not a composting queen. I basically use it to throw my sawdust. I throw my plants at the end of the year in it. Not the tomatoes. I always throw those away because I've heard that they can carry diseases or something. I don't know if that's true or not. I just heard it and I go off of that. But it's made out of four pallets and then just extra recycled wood from other like parts of my garden. So this was completely free to put together besides the hardware cloth. I did have to pay for that. But yeah, I kind of did an update on this in my last garden chores vlog. And besides this needing a little bit of help, I am pretty happy with how it works. I don't really put food in it, so I don't have to worry too much about animals coming in. But I have a little compost bin in my freezer that I periodically empty out into here. But yeah, I don't turn it or water it. I guess it's just kind of a place for things to sit. Right here I have where I intentionally planted my cucumber. This is where I've grown them every year. I know you're supposed to rotate your crops, but this, this spot just always works for them. So I just keep planting them here. It took them a long time to take off. 
I will say that. But now they're looking pretty good. And I'm not hurting for cucumber, so I'm not exactly like worried if they don't fully take off. But yeah, cucumber. And then right here we have a little, um, a couple sprouts of marigolds. I really this year wanted to be more intentional about planting flowers in the garden. So I, anytime I see like some marigold flowers that are dead and need to be deadheaded, a couple times I've just pulled them off of the plant and like spread the seeds and kind of ruffled up the soil. Over here we have a pest ridden tomato. This largely happened while we were on vacation, but I do think it was aphids that got to this one. And it doesn't look great, but I do believe that these are supposed to be like an orangey tomato. Yeah, this is the golden jubilee, so. We'll at least get one tomato before the plant succumbs to its injuries from the pests. I have been taking the hose and just like knocking the aphids off with like a powerful spray and that like it got rid of the aphids so I guess unless more adults come, I don't know. It's not looking great, I'll be honest. The tomatoes this year don't look very good. <laughs> this tomato however does look okay. It also was a little bit of a victim to pests but we have a bunch of tomatoes. So I think that we will overcome what we went through. Um, the garden also didn't get a lot of water. While I was on vacation, I didn't have somebody come out and water, which I probably should have. Probably stressed the plants out and that's likely what attracted all of the pests. That's my personal guess, but this is a Roma tomato. I think Roma tomatoes and the little cherry tomatoes are my favorites to grow just because Romas, you could put them on anything. You can use them in salsa and sauces. You can put them on your burgers. You can cut them open and like, I like to put sea salt on my tomatoes because I don't know, it just tastes delicious. So I'll do a little sprinkle of salt on them. Um, and these two are bell peppers and they're getting really tall. I feel like at some point I should have like deadheaded them so they'd stay more bushy, but we have lots of flowers on them. It's taken a while for them to really like get going, but you can see there's a little bell pepper forming right here. I find bell peppers very, very easy to grow. I'm sure all peppers are easy if bell peppers are, but I really like them and I use bell peppers a lot when cooking. I There's a lot of things that you could grow, but I really try to stick to things that we will actually eat because I really hate wasting the energy and honestly the money to grow things that I'm not really interested in. So I really stick mostly to like tomatoes, basil, rosemary, peppers, um green beans one year i grew snap peas and that was really great i love sugar snap peas but they're a little bit more of a cold weather crop but this section i have some marigolds i also planted some snapdragons but none of them came up so in the future i might just buy snapdragons that have already been started at the store um, because i guess the seeds are kind of hard to get going but anyway i really love the vibrant dark orange of these ones typically you see marigolds in like a really bright neon yellow but this deep color speaks to me so much more and this is the one that I've mostly like deadheaded and sprinkled around so there's a baby right here there's a baby right here um over here and here I have some babies and then there's another one right here and you'll see in my garden beds they kind of have like a hard cast like I don't know if you can tell that in the video but there's a lot of activity uh what is it called like not microorganism act yeah i think that might be what i'm looking for i don't know there's something going on here because you can see we have some like mushroom fungus thing here and then there's like a hard cast on top of the soil and i have done some research on like why it's doing that and it could just be because of the minerals in the soil but it also could be that the soil has become like water resistant but it's just at the top. So if you know why this is occurring, please let me know. When I like break it up, you can see there's like white stuff there. I don't know, this has never happened to me before. I put like three new bags of soil on these every single year. And I think I use the same brand every time and this has never happened. So there's a lot of activity going on. I don't know, so if you know, please let me know. This monstrosity is a grapevine and I did not plant this. So this was already established, but we actually cut it all down because we thought it was dead. Like it looked really, really bad when we moved in. And it was actually like, you couldn't even tell that it was a grapevine. I mean, I knew it was cause I could see the structure, but again, it looked dead. Anyway, this year I don't do anything to it. It just grows. 
and fills in. I also don't cut it down at the end of the year, so maybe that's why it looks so big this year. But I actually love that it's taking over this fence portion. I think it looks really cute. And you can see that the grapes are starting to turn purple. And actually, and I've never seen them turn purple before. And I don't know if it's because they haven't before, like the birds always ate them before they could, or I just wasn't paying attention. Um, but yeah, this is the first year I've really actually paid attention to this grapevine and I'm excited to try these. I think that that's, it's still a little early to try them. Actually, no, this feels really soft. Should I try it, Dan? Up to you. It's soft. Ugh. Okay, the seed scared me. The seed scared me. I think it's a Concord grape. Sorry, I did not mean to spit that out. They have seeds in them. I bit the seed and I thought it was a bug or something. It's like slimy, but it tastes like grape jelly. So I don't think that they're fully ready, but it tastes like grape jelly, so they must be Concord. Cool. This bed got nothing planted in it besides these marigolds. I really, really wanted to plant something here, but I never got around to it, which is a bummer, but it just, it is what it is. I wasn't gonna be hard on myself for not filling all the beds this year. Um, I definitely made my garden way too big because Although I love gardening, I'm not like this big of a gardener. My garden is a little bit deceiving. <laughs> but yeah, these are a single bloom marigold. The ones over there were a double bloom. These ones are a single bloom, so they look more like a traditional flower. They don't look like a puff. But you can see there's just like a ton of babies around. Like once these fill in, it's gonna be crazy. I probably will have to thin it out a little bit, but I definitely went crazy on this one, just like pulling these off. Let me show you what that... Okay. <laughs> Cool, so let me show you what it looks like. You just open this up and all of those are seeds, like literally all of those. So what I did was I just kind of sprinkled them around and I didn't even incorporate them into the soil. They just, I guess, got down into the soil. So that's what I did. And it's even better if you can find like a dried flower like this one and break that one open. The seeds are like not wet. I feel like that would work a lot better and then I just sprinkle them around. I'm sure that I'm gonna have volunteer marigolds for like the rest of my life in this spot, which is really cool because I love them. This middle smaller planter has my cherry tomato on it. And my cherry tomato for some reason is one long stick. I don't know what happened. I think that I should have like pruned it and then it would have branched to be more bushy. I honestly don't know, but it's made a couple really yummy tomatoes. Um, typically my cherry tomatoes are much bigger than this plant. It's just a weird year for tomatoes, I guess. I don't know. I'm not going to think too much about it. And then I have more single bloom marigolds here. And then this is a sunflower. I did intentionally plant this. I actually planted a bunch of sunflowers here and literally only one of them came up. Maybe my seeds were old. This bed is very full of cucumbers and I've harvested a lot of cucumbers from this area already. I really in intended for them to grow up over this. That would have been my preference, but they wanted to crawl. They did not make it over the trellis, which makes me feel like I should not have done this because it's like, what's the point? But I think it would be really great to plant like winter, like lettuce and stuff like that underneath this. Also, I think it'd be really great to plant brassica underneath this because brassica are just like magnets for like aphids and all of those types of bugs. And this just like would cover them. I'd be able to put something to cover it. This is a really, really big Cosmo patch. I've never grown Cosmos before, so I don't know if they're supposed to be this tall. I feel like I've only ever seen them like this tall and then they bloom, but yeah, mine are huge and they're also covered in aphids. I have had to come out a few times and just like spray them down. Although I think those are ants. They have ants all over them too. Or maybe those are just adult aphids. Honestly, I don't know. Oh, you can see yeah. this is covered in aphids. I think those are adult aphids, these black ones. I don't know. Anyway, I'm glad that this is getting aphids and not my like actual crops. Again, it's more like a, it's kind of like a catch crop. I was really hoping to get some Cosmo flowers, but I don't think we're gonna get any at this point. We'll see. I am spraying them off every single day, but they do come back. This bed, I really didn't do a ton with. This is kind of like my herb garden bed. This is basil. It's all bolting. I need to cut it down quite a bit, but my basil plants always get huge and I just don't eat 
that much basil. Like I don't really know what to do with all of this basil. So typically I am cutting it back, but when I went on vacation, it grew a ton and bolted like crazy. So I just got to come out here and trim it down. Next to that, this small little guy is a rosemary plant. And that is actually the same rosemary that I planted last year. So it stuck around, it overwintered. And I have heard that rosemary could be a perennial. I didn't know that it would happen here, especially in a raised bed. So I was really excited about that. I haven't used any yet because it is still pretty small, but there's definitely lots of sprigs that I could take. And then what you're seeing now is a sunflower. It's the same sunflower as the one in the cherry tomato planter oh. holes. Oh yeah, there's definitely some pest activity on this one too. That kind of reminds me of like caterpillar damage. I don't know. But anyway, again, I'm glad it's this and not my other stuff that's getting damage to it. But yeah, it actually, the top got bitten off by I'm assuming a deer because that fence over there or that gate fell off during a storm. So this was kind of open. It was kind of like a buffet for deer for a little bit and it got chopped and I thought that it was gonna die but then it actually just branched. And so I think we're gonna get, well, lots of sunflowers where normally we would only get one. This is my orange Xenia and I really like the multicolors. Um, the other colors, the pink Xenia is really beautiful, obviously, but I really love the orange and I have some white ones too that are much smaller. So in the future, I probably won't buy a multi-pack. I'll buy like specific colors so that I know what I'm gonna get. So yeah, guys, that is my garden. I hope that you enjoyed just hearing about my plants out here and seeing what I'm growing. Last year really was a wash because I had a newborn. So this year I wanted to put a little bit more time and effort into it. And thankfully we've had a much more wet year. So it's been a little bit better to do a little bit of the automated watering for me. You probably noticed that I don't have any drip irrigation, which is a huge regret of mine. I really wish that I did that. And in the future, if I ever revamp this garden, I will be adding that. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed seeing my garden and just a realistic garden you know not all gardens are perfect especially not mine because i am still new to growing food and flowers and all of that but i feel like every year i define more and more what i like to grow and what works and what doesn't and it's just a really fun adventure so if you have recently started gardening or even gardening for like i don't know 30 years i would love to hear from you in the comments down below about your gardens and um, if there's anything in my garden that really spoke to you so yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. My glasses are fogging up. <laughs> <laughs>